start of the work week and we are coming in hot. It is like Christmas in July. We got all sorts of goodies to fit and deliver today. Knee braces, AFOs, uh, replacement socket. cannot tell you how many times uh, doing mobile prosthetics, I feel like MacGyver. Fitting this Fritchie brace for a patient. Her ankle falls to the lateral, it falls to the outside. This is giving her that good lateral support that she needs. I just set it up as a free motion at the ankle. And so she's just having a hard time being able to pick those toes up and swing through. So what we're gonna do is drill a second hole, add a rivet so we can lock it into a more functional position. Not find the burning tool, but knife works just as well. All right, so we have her set up in uh, a little bit of dorsiflexion, and it's just going to be a matter of seeing the balance of her tone. I know when I'm stretching her and putting in the brace, she doesn't exhibit a lot of tone, but she does have some tone. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just uh, knock off these corners a little bit so it's easier for her to put in the shoe. Kind of bucketing right now. We'll see if it stops. And this just came out of nowhere. It was warm, bright, and sunny this morning. Shrinker socks. When it comes to shrinker socks, there's a couple different types, a couple different sizes, come in different compressions. So first of all, what is a shrinker? What is a shrinker sock? It is basically a sock of elastic stretchy material that does a couple things. It offers compression, it facilitates healing of the residual limb following amputation surgery, and it also helps shape the limb to a certain degree. Another question I get about shrinkers is, do I need a shrinker? And this is one question that's been coming up a lot lately. I'll be seeing a patient for initial evaluation and they're, you know, really anxious to get started and get going on the process. And they're like, well, I was told that I'd have to wear this shrinker thing before I could even get started on a prosthesis. Is that true? What is that? And this is where, brace yourself, what I'm going to say is probably going to be a little bit different and might sound a little bit contrary to what you may have heard. I usually don't provide a shrinker unless the physician is specifically asking for it or if the patient is experiencing phantom sensation and or phantom pain, especially at night. You know, a lot of physicians and a lot of practitioners are very concerned about getting that limb shape, getting that swelling down, because yes, there is swelling that occurs after amputation surgery, and that is gonna go down over time. But 
a lot of that limb shaping actually happens once you're actually up and going and using the prosthesis. And don't get me wrong, I am not anti-shrinker. I am just anti-delaying care. I've had a couple patients that were asking me, you know, I heard about this shrinker thing. What is that? Are you gonna provide that? Why do I need that? And they were under the impression that they would have to be in the shrinker for several weeks before we could even get this started on the process. Even though, you know, this patient in particular, he was already healed. He already had his sutures out and he was anxious to get going. So like I said, I'm not anti-shrinker. I'm just anti-delaying care. It is my philosophy that, and philosophy of others as well, we get you up and going in a prosthesis as soon as possible. When you do lose some of that volume that we are able to easily accommodate for that in your socket. Especially with the way we cast for above knee for transfemoral amputees. If you haven't seen our casting technique, there is a video. A lot of that volume management is already kind of automatically taken care of. Yes, you are gonna lose a little bit of volume especially once you get up and going on the prosthesis but that is something that's accommodated for in our casting and then when we're looking at the check socket as well and then we can also adjust for and accommodate in the definitive socket itself and I do like providing shrinkers especially for patients that are having phantom sensations and or phantom pain especially at night. Having that compression, having that shrinker on sometimes does help with some of that sensation and or pain. And just an added tidbit here, especially for patients that have severe sensation and pain, one thing I'll look into is shrinker socks, or, or it might just be a regular sock that's impregnated with silver that anecdotally has helped with some of that phantom pain, phantom sensation. So when do you wear a shrinker? Usually if we're providing a shrinker, we're already seeing them once they're in back home or in the skilled nursing facility setting. So it's typically when they've had their sutures and or staples out and but that's generally typically when we're casting anyway. I am typically instructed to wear the shrinker 23 hours a day. Take it off during, you know, bathing or, you know, take it off during lunch hour. So how to put on a shrinker. So when I am teaching my patients or their family or caregiver how to put on a shrinker, this is the one that we use for transtibial for baloney amputees and it has some silicone beads to help it stay on the limb so it doesn't slide off, but these typically do still slide off. So I typically am instructing them to just roll it down part way through and stretch it wide and then place it on the bottom. And then they're gonna roll up top portion and they're gonna make sure that there are no wrinkles or no creases in the shrinker. And the above knee shrinkers, the transfemoral shrinkers, they're a little bit different. This one does have a waist belt that goes around to prevent it from sliding down. The main thing is just making sure there's a little cutout on the inside to make sure that that shrinker is all the way pulled up. Then there's a little ring that you're gonna slide to the bottom of your limb and then the rest of it, you're gonna reflect back over the residual limb. And again, same thing, 23 hours a day, make sure that it's all the way up, that there's no tissue bulging out on the inside of the limb and make sure there's no wrinkles or creases. So if you have any other questions or anything you wanna add when it comes to shrinkers, go ahead and comment down below and I will see you guys next time.